This video is about the nervous system, and the nervous system is the boss. It's the boss of all other systems, similar to the way that Don Vito Corleone is the, is the godfather. Similar to the way that Steve Carell is in the office, or Bruce Springsteen, otherwise known as the boss, made music in the 70s and 80s and 90s and 2000s. Is he still alive? I think he is. Same way Tony Danza was in Who's the Boss back in the 80s, which I remember watching, but not really. I don't know, even hardly know what it was about. Anyway, back to the nervous system. This is the boss of all the other systems, uh, so we're going to learn more about it. Job one of the nervous system is to receive information from our environment, uh, whether we are balancing on a tightrope or doing just about anything we're always receiving information from our senses we see things we taste things smell things hear things um, and we're, we're constantly not only receiving the information from our senses but quickly interpreting the message um, I found that this video uh, is is one of my favorite about the nervous system. I'll provide a link lower in your Google Doc, but um, in it, it, it describes how our brains actually determine if someone is trustworthy. Uh, we do that quicker than we even know that we've seen the person's face. Like the, the reaction that our brain has uh, to faces is, is so quick and has developed over time to... Uh, to be so fast and uh, in determining is this guy gonna hurt me or not thank goodness that uh, that I have such a trustworthy face do, do I have a trustworthy face hopefully hopefully I do you can trust me people you really can't look at this face maybe I should make, try I should try to make an untrustworthy face Flare the nostril a little bit. I got to work on the acting still, but uh, you know, uh, one thing about our senses, and and some of these are just mind blowing to me. I I can think these are prime examples of how your eyes can actually trick you. How your interpretation of what is there is actually different than what actually is there. Um, the one on the upper right, you can see that this the one looks way darker until you pull back the black lines. Uh, when the black lines are there, it looks way darker, and then you take them away, and they're, it's just not that way anymore. We're interpreting background and shading, especially in this one. A and B are the same color. Does it look like that? No. But since that other object is there, we interpret that, oh, the shadow is making this seem... Uh, a lot lighter than it is or darker than it is actually is when they're actually the same color um, our brains fill in information uh, constantly so can you trust faces can you trust eyes can you trust your ears um, this uh, ASAP science video is another one of theirs that is is quite mesmerizing and amazing uh, in the ways that your brain actually interprets what you hear differently depending on uh, what surrounds or what the situation is and I'll, I'll provide the link uh, for that one too uh, but for now we're gonna move on to job number two of the nervous system okay job number two is to respond to that information uh, you know I, I think of sports and music a lot um, because I've been involved in those things, but I think of the job of our nervous system in responding to different things that happen on the court or that happen musically or with the person next to you if you're in the same singing or uh, a band group or orchestra or something. You're constantly responding to what things sound like, what they uh, what, what is happening. Is the guy that is handling the ball in front of me uh, a good dribbler are they not do they have their dribble left are they gonna pass it are they gonna shoot it uh, 
what can I do to stay in front of him? There, your brain is constantly responding to the information and then doing something about it. Um, and that's why they say, you know, 99% of just about anything you do, um, even if it's a physical task, is uh, the mental side of things. It's The game is 99% mental, you'll often hear coaches say. Um, and it really is. It's uh, responding to the information that's there. Uh, whether you're playing a sport or you see a wolf to your right and you need to respond quickly um, to that. You have to respond to that information. That's going to happen in the nervous system. So you're taking in information, yes, and you're responding to it uh, with the organs of the nervous system, including the brain and the spinal cord and your nerves. Okay, job number three, maintain homeostasis. Um, the control center is most likely uh, determined to be in your brain. Uh, the control center is really in your brain, and it's you're going to be able to maintain homeostasis if you uh, get information, yes, from other organs and the nerves in those organs and get the message, and then uh, develop a response to help you stay in homeostasis, to keep your temperature the way it should be, to maintain the amount of, of water uh, in your body so that you don't get dehydrated or overhydrated. Um, uh, the amount of waste needs to be controlled. Uh, is there an infection? These are all things that your nervous system is going to have to send messages to and make connections so that your body stays healthy and able to do the the functions that it needs to do so it needs to maintain that homeostasis like this guy he's hungry your brain is going to send that message to you uh, or your stomach might send a message to your brain and then you reason man i'm hungry i need some pizza right now i need some lasagna uh some tacos whatever you want to eat okay the basic uh, building block of this whole system is the neuron. There are 100 billion neurons uh, throughout your body, uh, inside your brain, uh, in the nerves, in your spinal cord, and the basic structure of one of these neurons is, is pictured on this slide. Uh, on the left you'll see there are dendrites that receive, much in the way the whole system works, one neuron works. You're going to receive information here that impulse, the electrical impulse is going to travel through the cell body and then if that impulse is strong enough it's going to send it through the axon uh, and out to the other side uh, where this neuron will meet up with another. There's usually a little bit of a gap here between neurons and that's called a synapse and the electrical impulse that's being sent by each, each neuron or passed on to the next neuron is going to actually jump across that synapse and continue on to the brain or a different part of the brain. Um, and those connections between the neurons are so fast um, and so important uh, that it uh, th this whole communication is going to happen very quickly and, and efficiently. Uh, the path of a nerve impulse uh, typically would be like this. You have a sensory neuron, whether that be in your ear or your eyes or a, a, your sense of touch in your skin. You get this sensory neuron that sends a message and then that message travels through neuron impulses to uh, interneurons inside your brain. Uh, a lot is happening in the brain and scientists are learning more and more about it every day. Um, but then a response to that uh, that impulse is determined and interpreted and then the response is sent out by the motor neurons. Let's say you hear a loud noise, it gets to your brain and then the motor neuron would tell uh, the muscles of your body to start running or at least look in the direction of the noise to see what's going on here. Let's get more information. Uh, so that's the general uh, path of a nerve or neuron impulse. You get information, you determine what to do, and then the message that uh, is actually uh, 
the thing that you respond to is traveling through the motor neuron and that's where you react. Uh, this path is also detailed uh, in uh, a video that I'll also share a link to uh, with the other ones in the assignment after this one, after you watch this video. But it, it does a good job of explaining it there too. Um, your nervous system can be, be split up uh, into two parts. Uh, your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. In other words, the central is like that, uh, the brain and the spinal cord, the central areas of that nervous system, and then the, the nerves uh, that make up your peripheral nervous system go outside and everywhere throughout uh, your body. So central nervous system is brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system includes the nerves that send messages that eventually get to the spinal cord and or brain. Uh, if we break down the central nervous system a little more, uh, this picture will show the cerebrum, which interprets input from senses, controls movement. Uh, this is split up into smaller parts of the brain like the prefrontal frontal cortex, which is developing uh, as we speak in, in your minds as an adolescent uh, person. Uh, but the cerebrum is kind of like the thinking, the learning, the remembering part of your brain. Uh, the cerebellum coordinates action, actions of muscles, helps you balance um, uh, these things. You know, all of this is happening without you thinking, oh, this part of my brain is working right now. This is just the way it is. Uh, so the cerebrum is thinking, learning, remembering. Uh, the cerebellum coordinates actions of your muscles and your coordination maybe a little bit. Uh, the brain stem controls involuntary activities like breathing and heartbeat. Uh, and obviously you wouldn't want to damage any of the parts of your brain in your, uh, in your central nervous system. Uh, and yeah, they would all have uh, different effects depending on what part of the brain might be injured. All right. Uh, finally, the peripheral nervous system can be split further into two different parts. Uh, one is the somatic nervous system. This would be the part of the peripheral nervous system that's in charge of things you can control. Uh, so the voluntary movements like, uh, uh, like hiking, like in this picture, or uh, playing an instrument, or talking, or eating. Uh, the th those things that you have control over are controlled in that somatic nervous system, that part of the peripheral nervous system. And the last part uh, that I'll talk about is the autonomic nervous system. This would include the things you're not in control of constantly. Uh, so vasodilation or constriction, where your blood vessels get smaller, or larger. Uh, the digestion of food we've talked about can be uh, an autonomic uh, involuntary action controlled by this part of your nervous system. All right, that's it. So that's the boss right there. Uh, good luck. Check out those videos and resources uh, later, and that's it for now. Adios.